<laughs> well, Sean, how did you go from this high tech job? You're in a Fortune 100 company, making a lot of money. Yeah, and you pretty much gave that all up to study human consciousness. Yeah. How did that happen? Well, um, it was in that world of being in high tech that, you know, I got a lot of success early on. And I was making a bunch of money and I was a single dude, you know, uh, pretty girlfriend, great friends. Like my life was full of the right answers. And so I just purchased a house on a double lot in Atlanta at the age of 27 by myself, no co-signers, like just, you know, balling. And <clears throat> I'd filled it with, you know, a bunch of cool stuff and gloss black piano and uh, all this, you know, weight set and all this stuff that I wanted when I was younger because I grew up in poverty. And then all of a sudden it turned out I was a little talented in tech. And then the money just started flowing because, you know, I was working for a supercomputing company and, um, and it was just that they're million dollar computers. So when you sell some of those things and you work on them, you get paid a lot of money. And um, like at some point we'll have to talk about how I was shipping computers to Area 51. That was a cool little job. But um, I was in on the front porch of this house and I was looking out across the extra lot that I had and I was like, okay, so I've got all this stuff and I got friends coming over. I'm waiting for the installers for the stereo system that are coming to put the stuff in so we can have this big party at my house. And I'm like, all right, well, so what's next? And something about that, because I was thinking about maybe putting a gazebo or something out in the side yard or whatever and wiring it up for sound, but that was what I was thinking about. And I was like, wait a second, hold on. I went from food stamps and living in a little two bedroom, one bath house in rural Indiana. And 10 years later, where you know I was poor as shit, I'm on the other side of the coin make a good income, success from, you know, American dream perspectives. Like I got, I got everything. There's no wrong answer. It's like, I'm not unfulfilled. I feel like I have a good relationship with God. You know, there's like, there's nothing really missing for me. Yet here I am with all the things that I was ever told that I should have for happiness. And I'm already looking for what's next. And something in my mind clicked. It's like, wait a second, you're not, you're not happy with all of this stuff. It's like, where's the finish line going to be? Like, what is it going to be that finally says, okay, I'm, I'm good, I'm done. And I started to analyze it, and then I started to read a little bit about, you know, psychology and whatnot. And uh, it was like, there's going to be no stopping point. There's this thing called a hedonic treadmill where, and it's a part of the immune, or excuse me, the part of the nervous system, not the immune system, but the nervous system where, like, your nervous system reports the differences in things. Like you smell a, a scent for, for the first 10 minutes and then all of a sudden you don't smell it anymore because let's say you wake up in the middle of the night and the gas is on and you smell it. Well, it woke you up because it went from low to high and it alerted you and said, okay, there's a big difference in the gas smell. But then after 10 minutes, it goes from high to high and it stops reporting on the difference of things, right? And you got to get out of the house. That's why the firemen say, get out of the house if you smell gas because you won't smell for very long, but it'll kill you. Because your nervous system only uh, measures the differences in things. And so in reality, what that does to our life is when we start making financial accumulation and the brand new car is really cool for the first few months that you're driving it, and then all of a sudden it gets to be old hat. That's your nervous system normalizing to the things that you've attained already in life. And then you start looking for the, well, what's the difference? How can I get more? And that never stops. And that's why these billionaires are always looking to pile more money on top, more success, more businesses, more accolades, right? Oh, I'm not the richest man in the world yet. Let's do that, right? Mm -hmm. And they're chasing, they're chasing, they're chasing because the nervous system always normalizes to what you have. And so that's what was going on in my mind that I was just learning about. It was like, I've got all this stuff, what's next? And I was like, if I if I follow this pattern, I'm going to be chasing that my whole life. That's interesting you say that. I am coming to that. I've I've come to that realization that it's all just shit. Yeah, it is all just shit. Yeah, you know, and uh, and if you let that 
if you let that shit get to you, it, 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 you're just feeding and creating a monster. Yeah. It's, it's, it's greed. Yeah. Most definitely. It's greed. So I started looking for more. I was like, okay, what, what is it that I'm missing about my internal sense of who I am and what I am and what I want in life, et cetera. And I started to do some reading on um, global religions, trying to figure out, is there something I missed in my religion that maybe, you know, there's some other answers that I need to, or what could be commonalities um, that are, uh, could be brought into my existence that could maybe illuminate me into something else that I need to be doing, et cetera. And I found some patterns of commonalities in religion, which are really interesting. But then I read a book on T. T. Suzuki's introduction to Zen. And I learned about meditation, which was a foreign idea to me at the time, because, you know, I grew up Christian and I you know, went to church. I was president of the youth group for four years. You know, I was like in it. And at that point, I started to understand that there was this thing called Satori. And I didn't know what that was. It's just a word for their explanation about a moment of perfection that allows you to understand absolutely everything. I want to tell you all about this new meat delivery service I found called Moink. What I really, really like about Moink is they are from a small, rural farm town in Missouri, LaBelle, Missouri, right by where I grew up. And I love supporting small town business USA. Now, when I started looking into Moink, they educated me on the meat industry. And I want to share with you all a couple of facts, according to... Moinked Magazine. 60% of all pork is produced by one company in the U.S., and that is 100% owned by the Chinese. Four companies control over 80% of the meat industry in the United States. More than 10,000 different additives are allowed in the U.S. food supply. 99% of chicken, 95% of hogs, 78% of cattle in the U.S. are raised in confinement buildings or feedlots. That means they're not moving around freely. 80% of the antibiotics consumed in the U.S. are fed to animals. Here's a stat. In 2016, 18.4 million pounds of antibiotics were sold for livestock. And that's what you're eating. Suicide rates amongst farmers are the highest than any other profession, and that includes veterans, believe it or not. I found that alarming. Now, here's what Moink is doing to combat some of this stuff, which I really appreciate. Their livestock is 100% born and raised and harvested humanely in the United States of America. Their farms practice regenerative agricultural methods. They are free of GMOs, antibiotics, and all hormones. Their Alaska salmon is wild caught. Their beef and lamb are grass fed and grass finished. Their boxes ship from rural America, right in small town Missouri. Love it. Their chicken and pork are pasture raised. So, guys, check them out. Moink. Keep America Farming going by signing up at moinkbox.com slash SRS. Right now, listeners on this show get free bacon in your first box. It will be the best bacon you will ever taste, but it's only for a limited time. It's spelled moink, M-O-I-N-K, box.com slash SRS. That's moinkbox.com slash SRS. And I'm like, well, what's that all about? Interesting. I'm looking for answers, so maybe... Satori? Satori, yeah. And so I started meditating, and I was horrible at it, because <laughs> I didn't know what it was. You know, I'd look it up and try to read about it and whatnot. And uh, then I started to read articles on websites and stuff. I'm like, well, this actually tracks back into the Christianity that I know, because Jesus meditated. It says right so in the Bible, you know, 40, 40 days out in the desert. <clears throat> and... Uh, so I was like, all right, well, I'll try it. And so I started meditating. I started calming my mind. And then I started reading more about Zen, which to me is more of a philosophy of mind mastery than anything. And I worked on using the 800 pound gorilla of my mind to tame the 800 pound gorilla of my mind, because <clears throat> from a practical perspective, they just want to cease all conscious thought and then find out what happens next. 
And so that's what I focused on. I was like, I want to shut my mind completely down. I want to hear nothing but silence and then see what I can hear from there. And there's a crazy thing that happened that I'm, for the last 20 years, I've been trying to figure out what the physiology and the science is behind it. But a different experience of consciousness arose within me when I got to a point of complete quietude. 